First of all, what do we mean by an ecosystem health report card? And uh, there, there are five things I wanted to uh, bring up that, that we consider important in defining a report card. First, it's a broad level of, of an assessment, broad level assessment of a region or a system, in this case, Western Lake Erie, and it's and importantly, the, the watershed. It's a way of communicating complex information. We take lots of data and, and uh, synthesize, distill it down to report card scores. It's based on real data. It's 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 about having transparency and being able to defend that uh, that uh, our, our conclusions based on data. It provides not just transparency but also accountability, and it engages the community uh, in in the the journey that uh, a lot of the concerned professionals that are on this call that have been in, working on Western Lake Erie for for decades now. Uh, it, it's a, a way to reach out and include a broader uh, suite of the community. So those are the reasons why we do this, uh, uh, these report cards. And you can see an image here of the, we've been doing the Chesapeake Bay report card for 14 years. And, and this last year, we, we had a Bay and Watershed report card release, uh, which is expanding uh, the, the dimensions of our report card. So the next um, slide just gives you a, you know, what are we doing from Maryland coming out to Ohio? I am an Ohio boy. I was born and raised in Dayton. Uh, but uh, but I've been University of Maryland for 18 years now, and what we've been doing is uh, doing report cards all around the world. So we've been down in South America and the Philippines. Uh, you can see Long Island Sound, uh, Great Barrier Reef in Australia, Baltimore Harbor, uh, uh, and India. Uh, we've got report cards ongoing now in Africa and Asia, um, and so. We've been doing this uh, in a lot of different locations uh, and uh, with, with you know, various, various and different challenges that the local communities are experiencing, not totally unlike the, the, the grand challenge that you have in Western Lake Erie with these uh, insidious algal blooms. Okay, next, uh, next slide, we've got um, a, what we call the environmental intelligence pyramid. So, so basically at the at the base, the foundation is is the data, and that's the that that's where the scientists get together, and we share our data amongst ourselves using peer reviewed literature and, and reports, and then we feed that to the resource managers who who put that into technical documents and 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 start to form policy, and then that goes into the stakeholder groups, the NGOs like the the like Curie Foundation, and and all the other uh, groups around that that can utilize this and then ultimately into a report card. In each case, we're synthesizing more and more as we go up the pyramid with less information density. But the important part of the report card is it sits on top of a very solid foundation of, of science and data. So this isn't uh, a qualitative uh, partisan thing. This is just letting the data speak as broadly as possible. So that's the, that's the fundamental uh, basis of, of that. Uh, report card. So here are the team from the University of Maryland Center for Environmental Science. Uh, I'm the one on the left uh, uh, without much hair. The guy in the, uh, to the right of me with a lot more hair, uh, uh, born, uh, well, raised up in Lafayette, Indiana, Andrew Elmore. He's uh, Dr. Andrew Elmore. He's a science integrator uh, with our team. He, he's uh, also a faculty member at the uh, Appalachian Lab, a landscape ecologist. Alex Fries, who's um, our program manager, uh, was uh, in, very involved in this project, uh, took a little sabbatical to go have a baby and, and came back. So um, she's uh, actively uh, orchestrated the, 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 the journey. Uh, Brianne Walsh filled in for her while, uh, while Alex was off having her baby. Uh, science, uh, a science communicator from Lake Ontario, downstream of Lake Erie in Rochester. And Annie Carew, uh, our newest science communicator, uh, was roped in to help us uh, in the final uh, stages of the report card. So that's our team. And then uh, we started in November. We kicked it off in Sandusky uh, in November 2018. We've also uh, came back in, uh, to, in Toledo and, and met again. And we've done a whole lot of virtual, of course, like the rest of the world, to bring this to a, a bring this to fruition. Uh, next slide shows uh, the cover that we're, we've got of this report card. And I just, 
I just think uh, I just think these images are so iconic. It's such an iconic location, um, and and you've got uh, a tremendous uh, resource uh, up in the Great Lakes. I you know I've I've always enjoyed the Great Lakes uh, growing up. I thought I was going to be a limnologist, and and uh, and then then when I got to the ocean, I decided to become a marine biologist. But this is this is where I got my start is jumping into these waters. Anyway, that's the that's just the cover, and then we have a, a very you know we do a lot of these uh, conceptual diagrams to reach a broader uh, range of people who don't necessarily want to read or, or look at the data, and and this is our sort of a cartoon form of the city of Detroit up there, the Detroit River coming in from the top, and then uh, the Maumee River uh, from the left uh, with its a dose of nutrients coming from. Uh, you know, ag and and um, and uh, Toledo there on the left, and then we've got our uh, microcystis bloom right there in that western uh, lake. We got our beautiful uh, islands and um, and uh, Ontario there on the right. So so it's just a general schematic to to emphasize we've got inputs coming from all different locations that are contributing to the situation that that occurs in Western Lake Erie. So now here are the report card scores. This is what we've been waiting for. This is the watershed. So when we started this journey, we were just focused on the Maumee River watershed. And, and of course we had our partners in Lucas County and Toledo and uh, Oregon, but uh, we quickly realized uh, that we needed to go upstream to include the inputs to the Detroit River and Lake St. Clair, which include uh, the watersheds in Ontario and Michigan. So the watershed map uh, is much broader than just uh, the Northwest Ohio. We've included bits of Indiana, Michigan, and Ontario. And you can see it's a color-coded scheme. And uh, this, uh, our, our more, most challenged uh, watersheds are uh, St. Mary's watershed and the upper Maumee River. And then uh, coming out of the the uh, watersheds coming out of uh, southwestern Ontario, uh, uh, Essex, and then the Raisin uh, Huron watershed uh, just south of Detroit. And, um, and then you can see the inset is the report card scores for the Western Lake Erie Basin. And you can see that the cleanest water in 2018 was the Northwest. So in fact, the uh, Detroit River and the, uh, the what's coming ultimately from Lake, a lot of it mostly from Lake Huron, is actually diluting out and improving the water quality in, in that Western Basin. And then uh, the Maumee and Sandusky rivers that are, that are coming in and, and the Michigan rivers are, 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 are countering that, uh, that clean uh, input. Next slide shows the, the suite of indicators we used for this Western Lake Erie Basin. And we have three categories of indicators, water quality, algal blooms, and fish. So you can see within the water quality sector, we've got five indicators, nitrogen and phosphorus are two major nutrients, and chlorophyll, that's the measure of the plankton in the water. And then in the algal blooms, we have a bloom index, a source toxin, that's source water, that's the drinking water, the toxin is associated that's coming in the drinking water, and recreational toxins that are, um, and then we've got in the fish, we've got yellow perch, walleye, and emerald shiner. And you can see emerald shiner and some of the nutrients in chlorophyll are, are not doing, weren't doing well in 2018. Uh, next slide shows the suite of, in, uh, of indicators combined into the scores. And you can see that uh, the, the, the most degraded uh, where the Maumee, Southwest, and Northeast, but uh, Northwest is, is in better shape and slightly uh, less degraded in the islands in Sandusky Bay. And then our watershed. So our watershed, again, three major categories. We have water quality again, we have toxics and biology. So the water quality is the same nitrogen phosphorus, but instead of chlorophyll, we have total suspended solids. For toxicants, we have fish, fish consumption, the source toxin again, the uh, drinking water, and we uh, aspire to get pesticide data. We weren't able to get a complete set of data uh, for this round of report cards, so that's grayed out. Um, in future iterations, we hope 
that we could uh, fill that in. And then for biology, we have the things in the streams and the rivers uh, that, that count, the, the fish, the bugs, and the, and the habitat, the, uh, the benthic invertebrates, the habitat, and the fish. And you can see from this, uh, drinking water was was in good shape as it was in the, coming out of the, uh, the, the Western Basin uh, in 2018, but our nutrients are degraded and we have some fish consumption issues. So uh, when we look at the watershed on the map, uh, we have, uh, and this was summarized earlier in that, in that watershed map, you can see that the, the Thames in Ontario uh, is it, it degraded, maybe not as quite as badly as, as uh, some of the Maumee uh, and Raisin, but, but, um, but in general, none of the scores appeared to be good or very good. Uh, that's, that's, that's a testament to the fact that these, pro these, these problems are, are, are fairly systemic and, and going to be a challenge. And, and I'm so glad we have political leadership listening to these report card scores because ultimately that we're going to have to work uh, to figure out how to get these scores into the green A and B categories. So um, that's the, uh, the, the overview. But if you want more information, we've got a website and it's www dot lake erie report card dot org and you, you'll be able to drill down and see the data the indicators the thresholds uh, the reporting regions and and the the actual report card we have hard copies uh printed uh of course we're not handing them out we normally we were going to do this uh release in in uh, late march i think the 27th uh or something so um but we had to cancel uh associated with COVID. So um, in the end, we've just decided to, instead of waiting, uh, we're going to do, do this virtually. But we do have hard copies, which will be distributed. And I'm, I'm sure that uh, if you need a copy, you can get that. And you certainly can download the PDF version from this website. So if you want more information, please visit the website. All right. Um, and then uh, some acknowledgments. So we were able to uh, get a really uh, fantastic group of, of, of contributors uh, throughout this process. Our funders were uh, the city of Toledo, city of Oregon, and Lucas County. Uh, it was uh, orchestrated through the Lake Erie Foundation. Uh, and so I want to thank uh, those people. I want to call out a few really important people that were uh, uh, orchestrated this effort. Uh, Sandy Ben, the Lake Erie Riverkeeper was a catalyst. And uh, Rick Graham from uh, the Isaac Walton League served as our Lake Erie Foundation representative. He was with us throughout the process. Dr. Tom Bridgman and Dr. Laura Johnson, I'll be introducing in a minute. Uh, they're they're going to speak to this, but uh, Tom from uh, Bridgman from the University of Toledo and Laura Johnson from Heidelberg University were absolutely crucial and and um in, in getting the, the appropriate data we had a great uh, colleague john dr john bratton from limnotech and uh michelle seltzer from the michigan department of environment great lakes and energy and uh, dr chris winslow from ohio sea grant all were very important in helping us get the right people into the room to get the right data to pull these uh this this story together so thanks to all of them and thanks to all the other people who contributed in our workshops or collected the, and analyzed the data or went, you know, uh, continued uh, to help us in the indicator selection threshold establishment and commenting on our, uh, the, the final layout and design of our report card. So, so uh, you know, this, is, this has been a, a, a real interesting journey and we really appreciate the people. Uh, and not to forget, um, you know, it wasn't just, uh, uh, we started in Ohio, but we roped in, uh, people from from Indiana, Michigan, and Ontario. Uh, so thank you for uh, contributing to the to, to our to our final product. We also uh, are in, uh, love feedback. So we've got a survey uh, that we're, we're we're putting out there, uh, and we'll appreciate if you take a few minutes at the end of this to fill out that survey.